Here we are in our example form 1040 populated with Lacert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to the form 1040 related forms and schedules at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov, starting point, single filer. We've got then no dependents, 100,000 W-2 income, 12,950 for the standard deduction, getting us to that 87,050, mirroring that over here on our Excel worksheet in a formula, formula. format, 100,000, 12,950, there's the 87,050, page two. We're gonna rely on the tax software to do the calculation which is important when we talk now about the capital gains because we could have a scenario then where we have favorable tax rates if we're talking about long-term capital gains. Currently, that's at 14,774. Then we said there's 15,000 withholdings getting us down to the 226 on the bottom line. There's the 226. Okay, we're going to be talking about the capital gains now. So if I go back on up to page one, now we might dive into capital gains uh, in more depth in a future presentation. Right now, we just wanna get a, a general idea that the capital gains, of course, are another type of income that will be flowing into page one uh, of the form 1040, often populating or going through the other form of the uh, schedule D. So for most people, you'll get like a 1099, something that will look something like this. It'll have a B on it. So if your financial institution you do business with, you might then have interest from them, dividends from them, which will be a 1099 interest or 1099 div. And then also they might give you a 1099B, which not, might not look exactly like this, but will have the key fields hopefully in order to do the population, that being the proceeds, what you got, they should have that for sure. And the date that you sold it, they should have that for sure. And then hopefully they can estimate or get or provide the date that was acquired acquired which is the more difficult field for them to to populate because you might have had the stock before you were doing business with that particular institution and then the cost is also another area of complexity because hopefully they can provide you that but you might have had the stock before you dealt with them and there might have been various stock splits you might have inherited the stock and all this complicates what the value or cost of the stock uh, would be. So that's the thing that we gotta be aware of that we can run into problems with first uh, of all. Also note that you might have like a summary uh, from your financial institution that will give you the total proceeds. And then you might have to go to the, the detail to get more information about all the sales that were taking place. Also realize that if you're in a situation for most clients, their investments are under the umbrella of an IRA or a 401k, even though they're invested in stocks, for example. And that would mean that when they when they actually uh, are in retirement, then they're going to get then they're going to get the the 1099 R most likely. And you'll have to pay ordinary income because you got a tax benefit when you put the money in to that type of retirement account. You'll have the 1099 B typically from stocks that were sold, possibly from like a day trader type of situation or someone that has investments, which would be good to have outside of the umbrella of an IRA for like the short term needs or if they've maxed out what they can put into an IRA or 401k plan. And then when you sell those items, that's when you would expect to be receiving uh, something like a 1099B. We could have gains, we could have losses related uh, to the sale uh, as well. So let's then populate this over here. We're gonna say, all right, uh, there was a sale that took place. We've got this 1099B. So I'm gonna go in and say that we have income and let's say it was an income from schedule D. And then I'm gonna populate something like, now the, the quantity would be how much we sold and the description we might say shares of whatever stock and then the date acquired now note if they give you if it was one or two stocks sold and you have the exact date acquired then then that's great but if you have multiple sales of stocks then you might have to go into the detail and put each of those transactions in or summarize them possibly the major thing that we need to do when we summarize them if that's the tactic we take is to make sure that we're categorizing long term versus uh short term so let's take like one stock for example first let's say the the acquired date Let's say we know what the acquired date is because they gave it on the 1099B or the sub 
schedules related to it is 0101 Alice 00. Okay, that's the 010100. So January 1st, 2020. So that's clearly over a, a year old. Therefore, it's going to be long term and possibly subject to the more favorable capital gain rates. I'm going to say we sold it. We would have had to sold it sometime in 2022, of course. I'll just say it's in the middle of 2022. The sales price, let's say, was 1000 But the cost, what we purchased it for, the difficult calculation, if this was stocks that were old and had splits and whatnot, uh, that's where the, the issues could come in on the cost and on the date acquired, which may require some estimates sometimes, right? So I'm going to say, let's say the cost was, was 300 And so there's a gain that was applied and so on and so forth let's do that for the example jump into the tax forms we now have a schedule d that has been populated it's capital gains and losses so if i scroll through the schedule d i don't have anything populated in the short term because it wasn't a short-term calculation it's a long-term calculation down here where we have the 1000 minus the 300 that means the gain is 700 dollars and there's the 700 that's gonna be pulling into the 1040. So here's the form 1040, and then we've got the gain that's pulled in right there. Now, if I mirror this on the, the software over here, I can mirror this in our calculation, but remember that we've got this other issue with the tax calculation down here because we're not taxed at ordinary income because it was a long-term capital gain. So let's go back on over and say, okay, uh, let's add the Schedule D. Do I have a Schedule D? No. So I'm going to say add. I'm going to pull this to the right. I'm going to do this fairly quickly because it's not an Excel course, but I'm just going to make another sheet that will mirror the Schedule D. I'm going to put my cursor on the whole sheet, the triangle, format it. I like to make it currency, bracketed negatives, no dollar sign. Let's remove the decimals. I'm going to make it larger, and I'm going to call this an A1 let's say it's a schedule my fingers aren't on the right schedule d cap capital capital gains boom and then i'm going to make this one a little bit larger and let's put it home tab font group we're going to make it black and white for the header let's do that i'm going to make the whole thing in bolden so you can see it a little bit more and then we're going to have a short term short term and then i'll have long term maybe down below long term something like that and i'm going to leave a bit of space for both of those and make this black and white and let's make this black and white i'm going to leave i'm going to make this like blue or something so let's go blue and bordered blue and bordered and then I'm going to say this was the sales price and this is going to be the cost and let's make another one and this is going to be the gain or loss gain or loss and I'm going to format this over here let's center this like so let's do the same thing down below copying this and paste it here I'll put some blue and bordered, blue bordered. And I'll say this is the total short term, term capital gains. I'm gonna sum up the outer column. And then this is gonna be the total long term cap, capital gains. I'm gonna sum up on the outside and then we'll say this is the total capital gains or losses I should be saying but I'm gonna say gains for now boom let's spell check it review and spell checky boom perfection all right